Hi, if you're in the market for a fridge but you're not really sure what to go for, then you're not on your own because there's a lot of choice available. So hopefully, if you watch this video, then you should have a much better idea as to what fridge to go for. So what I've done is I've come up with 10 things to consider before buying a fridge. So let's have a look. So although this list is in no particular order, I'd really consider this to be the most important one, and that's what type of fridge do you want to go for? The first type is the most popular, which is this called freestanding. And as it suggests, this type of fridge uh, just stands on its own, uh, can be plugged in anywhere, and the main advantage is that there's no installation to it. So that's the first type, that's freestanding. And the next type are the integrated fridges. So integrated appliances are becoming a lot more popular now. Uh, the main advantage is that when you go into a kitchen where you have got integrated appliances, all you see is the furniture doors. You don't see the front of the machines. And that has a big advantage, especially if you go for a freestanding one. If you are mixing and matching different brands, then uh, some of the shapes and the colours might not be quite the same. So it doesn't, doesn't look as smart as having integrated appliances. So that's really the first thing to decide whether you want to go for a freestanding fridge or an integrated one. So number two in the list, and same as the first one, where you're choosing whether it's freestanding or integrated, the second one I'd really consider to be important, and that's the size of the fridge. So whether it's a, an integrated one, so with integrated appliances, uh, on the whole, they normally fit into a 60 centimetre aperture. So things like the, the actual widths of the appliances are pretty standard, although I still would double check before you buy one. So something else to think about when you're looking at the integrated fridges is the type of integrated fridge that you want to go for. Now this type, this is called a built under fridge. And with this, so you've got the worktop here, and this is called a built under fridge. And the other type are called built in fridges. And the main difference is that this is designed to go under a worktop. That's why it's called a built under. And then the other type are designed to go into a carcass. So on the whole, they normally tend to be a little bit higher. Uh, so they sometimes they're not floor standing. They could be located a bit higher, which for some people can be a benefit. Uh, if you're say elderly, if you struggle to bend down that far, then having a fridge a little bit higher can be quite a benefit. But just check the dimensions on those because the built-in fridges uh, can be different heights especially. Things like the widths are fairly standard. Uh, again, they normally fit within a 60 centimetre carcass. But again, just double check that. But really the thing with a built-in fridge is to check the height. Uh, we've had it several times where people are not really sure what to go for. And on the whole, they go for a built under because that's a lot more popular. So when it comes to the freestanding appliances, they do tend to be a bit easier to measure. Uh, on the whole, the height of these type of appliances are pretty standard at around 850 high or 85 centimetres. Uh, things like the width, they do tend to vary. Uh, so the on this particular one, this is a popular hot point one that we do, this is 60 centimetres wide. And on this one next to it, this is 55 centimetres. There are smaller ones available, so they go down to around 50 centimetres. Uh, there are some very slim ones around 48 centimetres. But for the majority of fridges, they tend to be either 50, 55 or 60 centimetres wide. So just have a measure first. Um, the first thing is to check to make sure it will fit in. Uh, we do have people where they, they want to buy this kind of fridge because the space and capacity inside is, is very good. But if you've only got space for a 55 centimetre, then clearly there's no point in getting this. And turn the tables a little bit. Uh, what you can find is if you if you have got a 60 centimetre space then I personally I'll probably wouldn't go for a 50 centimetre fridge because you'll have a big gap down both sides. So whilst talking about the dimensions uh, don't forget to have a look at the depth of them. Uh, as you can see on here, so just comparing these two you can see how much deeper the hot point one is compared to this one on the right hand side, the Blomberg. Uh, on the whole, uh, so between these two you are looking at around four centimeters deeper for the hot point. The other thing to consider is on this one, you can see that it's got a handle. And for some people that is quite an important feature. Uh, other people don't tend to like it. So it is very much one of those love it or hate it type products. Um, but that may impinge on where it's going to sit. So if you have got cupboard drawers, 
uh, see if you've got drawers just here um, and if they need to open onto the where the fridge is going to open then the handle could be an issue so that's something else to look at so number three on the list has to be the storage inside the fridge uh, and what I mean by this is have a look at everything inside the fridge and see if it's got everything that you need because um, on some fridges it varies on the first of all things like the number of shelves that it comes with so on this this Blomberg one you've actually got three shelves and then you've got the the glass on top of the salad box at the bottom uh, so one reason we do really well with this is it normally comes with an extra shelf compared to most other fridges and it can be little things like that that could make the difference between you going for one model or another also have a look to see what um, door furniture they call it uh, have a look to see what you've actually got um, so at the bottom here on this one you've actually got a metal rail and that has a huge advantage because what you can find is if you if you get say the four or even the six pints of milk then because they're really heavy when you're opening the door quite a lot if you've got several bottles in here then that could be the first thing that breaks so on this one it's actually got uh, metal going around which is clearly a lot stronger than plastic uh, on this one on the hot point so again this is a popular one because it's slightly wider uh, what you will find on here is that the capacity of the fridge is very important um, I've combined these two together I was going to have the capacity as a separate item uh, but I thought I'd combine these two because in theory I'm sort of repeating some of it uh, so capacity on the fridge is extremely important and that's normally on the size of the fridge uh, clearly on this one this is a 60 centimeter as opposed to the Blomberg 55 so the capacity on this one is 149 litres as opposed to 128 on the Blomberg. Uh, so clearly the bigger capacity, in theory, the more you can get inside. Uh, but as I just mentioned, on here you've only got three shelves as opposed to four on the Blomberg. But you have got little things like you have got split shelf, so that's quite useful on the hot point. Uh, and what that has the advantage of doing is if you have got, say, a tall jar that you wanted to store in here, then you can just take half the shelf out. Um, all, on all of the fridges you have got different locations where you can put the shelves so that's normally quite useful. That's, that's pretty standard across most fridges but again just have a look to see the locations of those. Um, and again on this hot point one this is a nice deep uh, bottle rack at the bottom so this is ideal if you've got say the big six pint of milk uh, all the big juice cartons so then this is a uh, one reason that people tend to go for this also have a look to see what accessories come with it uh, on quite a few fridges uh, they come with this and if you've been watching my videos for a while then you know what this is this is a, a che cheeky little egg tray uh, these are quite popular within fridges uh, whether you actually use it in the fridge is another matter I know in our household we uh, we get through quite a few eggs so we we need quite a few of these in the fridge. So on an integrated fridge, it will always look a little bit different. Uh, you will find that the layout is a bit different because of the ventilation of the fridge. Uh, clearly on a freestanding one, you, a lot of the ventilation is at the back, but on an integrated one, you do have the grills along the front here. So that means that the whole design of the interior is a bit different. And things like the salad box is always laid out a bit differently. And on this one, this is a Blomberg fridge, you actually have a like a, a sliding shelf. Uh, that tends to go down quite well, so it means you can put things in the bottom. Uh, some of the cheaper brands don't have this sliding mechanism, it's just a static shelf that you have to lift out. Uh, but that's something else to look out for, especially if you're going for an integrated fridge. So number four on the list is, does the fridge have reversible doors? Now for a lot of people, you don't need to reverse the door. And personally, I'd only recommend reversing the door if you need to. Uh, the main reason, sometimes when the door is reversed on a fridge or freezer, it doesn't matter in any appliance, then sometimes the door doesn't quite sit the same as when it was first manufactured. Now, there's not really a lot you can do about it, but for some people, reversing the door is a necessity. If you're in, say, a small galley kitchen, uh, where you've got appliances running along one side and the door has to open one direction, then that could be an, one reason. Uh, we've just recently done an installation where a customer actually had two integrated fridges next to each other 
So clearly they wanted the doors to open where you've got the handles in the middle and then you just open them out on each other. So that it, that's another reason, uh, but have a look to see whether the fridge can, whether the doors can be reversed. The actual process to reverse the door, um, it's not that difficult normally, uh, whether it's an integrated or freestanding appliance, it is pretty easy. Um, I'd always say to find out if you want to reverse the door uh, as you buy it, and then when you get it delivered, do it before you plug it in. Uh, it's normally easier if you lie it on its back. Uh, I have done a separate video, I will post a link here to the video on how to reverse the doors, because it's it's not a difficult process. Uh, and if you are if you're a bit handy, then you know it's something you can normally do yourself rather than having to pay someone to do it. Now number five on the list would be the lighting in the fridge. Now it's something a lot of people don't really consider, uh, but it's something that I consider to be quite important. Uh, there's nothing worse than having a, a packed fridge and you can't really see what you've got in there. So just have a look to see what kind of lighting is in there. Uh, most manufacturers, and to be fair both of these just have a single bulb along one side, so that can limit as to how much you could see, especially if you've got a really packed fridge. Uh, some of the higher end manufacturers have got quite a few lights within the fridge. Uh, LED lighting is becoming fairly popular now. Uh, so that's number five on the list, just have a look to see what lighting is in the fridge. Number six on the list is the energy efficiency of the appliance. Now this is something a lot of people are quite aware about now, and a lot of people are talking about how much it costs to run, uh, especially as this, this kind of appliance, you know, your fridge and your freezer is on all the time. Uh, things like a washing machine and a tumble dryer dishwasher, they're the things that are used on the odd occasion, whereas a fridge and a freezer is switched on all the time. So just consider how much it's going to cost you in electricity. Uh, this is the energy label. Uh, so just have a look out for this. Uh, what you'll find is that they do vary quite a bit. So things like the, it gives you the, the, the rating and to how much electricity it uses. And also on the energy label, it gives you things like the noise and the capacity of the appliance. So just have a look out for this because what you could find is that uh, sometimes by paying a little bit more, then you could get something that is quite a lot more energy efficient, and that will, in the long term, that will save you money as well. So another advantage of a more energy efficient appliance is that the insulation within the walls and the door of the fridge will be a lot better. And that has the advantage that if you have a power cut, then if you have got a very energy efficient one, then the, the food inside should stay colder for a lot longer than a non-energy efficient one. So that's another reason to you know, try and look for a more energy efficient appliance. So number seven on the list, and this is something that not many people ask about, and it's does the fridge have a door alarm? And what I mean by that is if the, if the kids come along, come and get something out of the fridge, and if they leave the door ajar like that, is it going to tell you that it's open? Now, quite a few fridges don't have this, uh, but this is something I'd personally have a look at, just to see if the fridge itself has, has a door alarm. Especially if you've got young kids that you know, want to come and get a drink out of the fridge. And if they're anything like mine, then leaving the door open like this can be really frustrating. So number eight on the list is, does it have a frozen compartment? Now, not many people want to go for this now, because a lot of people have a separate fridge and a separate freezer. Uh, but you will find that some people want to go for one with a little ice box at the top. So this is an example of one. This has a little door at the top, so it is a four star freezer. Uh, and the, I suppose the advantage is that you can keep frozen things in here. The main disadvantage is if you are using this as your main fridge, then you do lose quite a bit of capacity in here. As you can see on here, we've only got one shelf and then the shelf on top of the salad box. So the advantage is that you do gain a freezer in here, uh, but we do find that these, this type of fridge isn't as popular now because people have got separate fridges and freezers. And the other thing to consider is that normally on a larder fridge, there will be automatic defrost. Uh, that basically means that it will defrost itself, so it will turn on and off, uh, so it just makes life a lot easier. Whereas normally on this kind of fridge where you have the ice box at the top, then these ones you normally have to manually defrost. So it can be quite a bit more effort. So I'd only normally suggest going for this kind of fridge if you are really limited for space and if you can't have a separate fridge and freezer. 
Now number nine is what colour do you want the appliance to be? Clearly for a lot of people and a big chunk of people go for white if you're going for a freestanding. Uh, clearly if you're going for an integrated one then it's not something you have to consider before, because when you get the appliance uh, you choose the furniture door that's going onto it so you're in control of the colour and the finish that you want it to be. That's one advantage of going for an integrated appliance. Um, but when it comes to the colour then just have a look to see what's around. Uh, if you're going for white then it does tend to be pretty standard uh, although you can find some of the white finishes can vary a little bit between manufacturers. Um, also there are quite a few other colours available so you've got things like the silvers, the blacks um, other manufacturers do slightly different colours, you've got pinks and reds, um, but yeah, there's a lot to choose from. But if you are looking for something apart from white, then try and think about the future of appliances that you're looking at. Uh, we do find that Hotpoint used to make uh, a colour called natural linen, which is like a creamy colour. Um, and what we found is that they, they ran that colour for several years and people were buying those appliances, but when they discontinued it, then people were struggling to match up the colour. So then you end up having mismatched colours within the kitchen, which to be fair doesn't look great. So try and think about the future um, as to what colour scheme you want to go for. And I think that's really why people, a lot of people tend to go with things like silver, which is pretty standard. Um, the other thing to mention is that, I know I mentioned about the whites uh, tending to, to vary. Things like the blacks and the silvers, again, can vary even more. Uh, on a black finish you can find that some of them are a matte black as opposed to some of them being a gloss black and again if you've got two different black finishes next to each other it just doesn't look that great. Now at number 10 in the list and within my list that I produce this is always the last one and that's the cost of the appliance. Now I know for a lot of people this could be really high up you know, how much is the appliance going to cost me? Uh, you can find that some of the very budget ones could be around the 100-120 pound mark and you can go up to the very tall, uh, say, integrated fridges, or even the very tall freestanding fridges that I've not really talked about. Some of those you can go well over a thousand pounds. So they do vary a huge amount in price, depending on what you go for. Uh, I know I've not really covered these. This is a tabletop fridge. Uh, this kind of thing can be ideal if you just want, say, an extra fridge, but like with a lot of these, you are quite limited for space inside. So hopefully that's given you a couple of pointers of things to consider before buying a fridge. Uh, all I'd normally say is please give us a thumbs up, click subscribe on my YouTube channel and leave any comments below. I always ask for comments on the videos, whether it's good or bad, also if you've got any questions on the fridges. Hopefully that's helped a little bit because what I try to do is I try to give people advice on the right product to buy rather than just looking for the cheapest all the time. So as I was just saying that the cost of the appliance is very important but have a look through the list before you look at the cost because you might find that there's uh, for example have a look to, to check the size of the fridge um, if you're looking at a, say a cheap one that's 50 centimeters have a look because there might be one that's 50, 55 centimeters where the capacity is bigger inside where you can get more food in have a look, look at the lighting to see you know just to make sure that if you've got some nice LED lighting that can make it a lot easier uh, to see the food inside. Other things like reversing the door, um, again only do it if you need to, uh, that's always something I suggest. Have a look at the energy rating on the fridge. Uh, you can find by, by paying a little bit more that you can get something that's a lot more energy efficient and as I mentioned because the fridge is on all the time then that could be something by paying a little bit more then you can get something that over the over the term of the fridge then you could save you quite a lot of money anyway if you have got any questions on fridges whether it's the integrated ones or freestanding ones then just pop it in the comments below and i'll get back to you don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you get to see any new products that are coming out i mainly concentrate on kitchen appliances things like vacuum cleaners washing machines ovens so there's quite a lot that i do cover thanks for watching